sitting here with Tom Kula, show chair for the 2013 Cena Sport World Games in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Tom, when did you start working on this event? So for me, I'd, I'd probably say really about five years ago, um, I found this location back before we even went to Louisville and uh, had an opportunity to get Ken and Andy out here to look at it a couple of years ago and they loved the site, called me, told me I under, undersold it. And from that moment on, I'd always been thinking about the logistics. How would we use the site with uh, the multiple arenas and where kenneling would be and parking and how we might use the grounds out front for some of the ancillary events. And so at least at a high level, I'd been, been planning this thing for quite some time. When it came down to the detailed planning that we do for Sinosport and really starting to execute, um, Immediately following, for example, this year, I mean, we'll start some discussion in the next couple of weeks about next year. And then it, it slows down a bit until probably January. And in January, um, the organizing committee, meet, we meet on a fairly regular basis every, you know, every couple of weeks since I'm always remote um, and start making sure that wheels are in motion. And probably in earnest, we really begin about May. And at that point, we're we meeting weekly, reviewing um, a project plan of, of action items and delivery dates of, of all the things that have to occur to put on the bed of the size. What are some of the things that you, when you're meeting, what are you discussing? I mean, I know there's a lot of logistics, but what are some of the things that people don't understand go in to do coming to this event? They come, they enter, they run their dogs, but they don't understand all the behind the scenes things that happen. So, you know, some of the things are the things that, of course, anybody that hosts a, um, an event a local club sees, except that for us, at least the past few years, because we've been moving locations, logistics is very difficult. We know we need porta potties, we know we need tents. Well, where do they come from? Who are the rental companies who can provide the kind of stuff that we need? Um, outside labor, you know, we have to rent forklifts, we have to have you know trained guys to rig scaffolding. Um, of course, we have you know some of the, the lesser skilled labor that we try and supplant the volunteers so that we don't need you know people who are here working on their you know on, on chasing a Grand Prix um, finish don't have to worry about fluff and shoots and, and of course we're always looking for some level of volunteer but there's a bunch of people in the background um, uh, scheduling you know labor that's here I mean almost around the clock. Um, making sure equipment gets here. How, mu how many jumps do we need? Um, and some of that, you know, you start early, but like this is a good example this year of we didn't know what we were going to actually need in the end until two weeks before when we closed and saw the size of the, of the entry that we had and suddenly where perhaps we thought a class might run in one or two rings suddenly exploded to five rings. Um, and so now that means more equipment or, um, and, and those kinds of factors. What about, I mean, some of the things that people don't think about, like the shirts, I mean, just checking in, I mean, like what Helen does as a show secretary, I mean, she, she does an amazing job, but some of the logistics that she does, um, you know, what can we tell competitors so that they understand a little bit more about what's going on? I got to tell you, Helen's job is one I would never want, and, and, and maybe she feels the same about mine, um, but the amount of work that goes into, I, I put a lot of pressure on her, of course, because I'm trying to decide, okay, I've got, for example, five rings and I make some ideas about numbers of, of exhibitors in each ring and how I want to balance them and how I want judging assignments to be because I need to time everything. But then she has to fill in all those holes and sometimes I make some pretty tough demands on her. Um, for example, this week where we might have a class running in multiple rings but one of the rings I only want X number of dogs because I'm going to rebuild for another class. And she now has to do this whole group concept that everyone's pretty familiar with by now but work into the constraints that I've given her where I only want this ring to want run that class for two hours where the other rings may run longer and how does she do that so I don't give her a blank slate and she's got to fit within those boxes and I know that's difficult for her. And then something I think that is really important for people to under, understand is the difference between an indoor venue like this as opposed to an outdoor venue. If we were outdoors this year we would have been able to add a sixth ring. True. It, it, there's good and bad. Um, you know, from a, a scheduling point of view, sure, we could have gone six, seven, eight rings, get a few more judges, getting more equipment, and no problem. Um, but outdoors has all kinds of other considerations. I need more tents, and um, you know, I got to get generators and yeah, fencing, um, just tons of things. That, for example, we had to do last year in Denver. So if I had to choose one or the other, to me, it's easier to be indoors. Um, the logistics are easier. 
but the scheduling is much tougher, especially when I am constrained to, like in this case, five rings. And we worked very hard to keep people indoors all week. We had options. Um, we could have put rings outside. We talked about doing that early in the week for the quarterfinals maybe and some of the team events. But you know, I fought real hard to try and keep it indoors, cause, cause every, and, and thankfully we did, because while it didn't rain this week, it has been unseasonably cold here in Tennessee this week. Yes, it has. Um, what are, if you could tell a competitor one thing that would help them understand what goes in to putting this event on, what do you think it would be? That there are probably a hundred people behind the scenes that are actively involved in putting on this show. You know, a local club has you know, a dozen people and they put on an event and they pack up the trailer and they go home. There's a hundred people that probably get touched doing this. There's probably 15 or 20 that are key and, and really putting in a lot of hours around this thing, but it spreads out far, far wider than that. Um, maintenance of the fields. So at the end of the day, when all the exhibitors are done and they go home to bed, all the fields get torn down. Right there, we've cleared the rings, we've taken down the ring barriers. Now the facility comes in to water the rings, work the dirt, and, and they're working it for a couple of hours. And it's not until they're done then that our course builders come on site. So now we're talking either you know, near midnight or in some cases perhaps you know, three or four in the morning. And we've got to build maybe in some cases five courses and they've got to be identical. And, mo and most people have seen or understood kind of how we do that. It is down to a science. But it's still an incredible amount of work to not only build five, build five identically. And, and the hours are those that you're not here to see. Um, outdoors, of course, we're saved a little bit because you don't have to work the arena like we do here. We've been working very hard to minimize dirt. We learned some hard lessons in Louisville. Um, this facility I knew would, they get the dirt thing better, right? They have horse shows here every weekend. Um, but yet for dog shows, it's different. Horse shows every hour or two, they're re-wetting the field and working the dirt. Obviously, that's not an option for us. Um, this week, early on, Wednesday, which was probably our hardest day, we did have some little haze in the air toward the end of the day. Every day it's been markedly improved, and I, I think exhibit, exhibitors have seen that as well. Um, the facility's working with us and, and watching very closely where are the dry spots, where are the problem areas as we continue the week going on. And I think it's continually improved. Um, like, for example, last night, the night we did uh, performance Grand Prix finals, here we are at 9 o'clock at night, and I thought it was great. You know, you, you touched on a good point about the facility. I mean, that is a key to a smooth running event. It absolutely is. Uh, there's Travis Emore and his staff have been fabulous to work with. Um, good bunch of guys, and it's not just, you know, keeping the rings going. And walk around, right, trash bins are empty. The, the bathrooms are cleaned up. Um, of course, we've got their, their food venue on site, and they've been here around the clock with us, and they have just been a fabulous team to work with. Um, I, I was thinking maybe we've worked them pretty hard, and, and they might not even want us back. Like, who wants these dog show people, because this is more than they've signed up for. Um, but I had a good long conversation with the staff this morning, um, and they're thrilled. It's, it's what they expected. And we've learned some things, they've learned some things as well. So if we are able to come back and choose to come here, I think going forward it'll be even better than it's been this year. Um, any other thing you want competitors to know when, as they're qualifying and trying to get ready for 2014? What should they be prepared for in Morgan Hill? One thing for sure, if, uh, if Morgan Hill is as big or bigger than this show, we do have the opportunity for a lot of rings. Um, the, the field turf area is quite large. Um, as an outdoor venue, we can expand it as, as much as we need to. Um, it's a beautiful area. The weather is, if, if it would be anything near this temperature, we're, we're in for another ice age. It'll be, I'm sure it'll be terrific weather in that part of the country. Um, and it is a, a very dog-friendly community. I've met with some of the, the civic officials there who are very excited um, about having Sinosport here. So things to think about is, and, and really this is going to be kind of outside, everyone's going to work very hard to qualify and do what they need to do. But we also want this not just to be a, a three, four, or five day agility show. We're trying to make this a destination. So yes, you burn a lot of vacation time to come here. Let's make it something that, that really is pleasant to be at and not just the stress around competition. So we're going to try and have, again, more ancillary dog activities. But the city itself, um, there's a lot of restaurants that, for example, have outdoor patios for dining that you can bring your dogs to. 
Um, we're hoping to potentially incorporate, um, it is wine country up there, and so trying to incorporate that as, as part of some of the, the evening activities. Um, so kind of look for that, and, and don't make it just a, you know, I'm chasing a Grand Prix or a steeplechase, um, you know, finalist plaque, but think about the, you know, I spent a lot of time working at this, and, and find some time off during the week to enjoy the location. I think you're going to love it.